Hi guys, before we jump into the episode, I just wanted to put a little trigger warning in here that this episode will contain themes of childhood trauma. So if you don't want to listen to that, please skip over this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back to another episode of Safe Space with Kira Graves. I am your host, Kira Graves, and this is my lovely wife, partner, spouse, love of my life, soulmate, um, all of the above, Lauren, aka Ren. How are you doing today, Ren? That was Willow. That That's how I feel. <laughs> um, I'm feeling very calm compared to yesterday. That's good. <laughs> Oh, Willow wants to jump up. Come here. Come here. You want to join the convo? Oh, she has long nails. Ah! Oh! Willow, up or down? Girl. Every time. That hurt. Every time I record an episode, she comes in here she and starts to meowing. Hi! She's silly. So, today we are going to be talking about a little bit of like a personal story that Lauren wants to share. And I think it's a really <gasps> important story. Um, and also kind of about like the correlation between your physical body and your emotional body, yeah. like what's going on in your like pain body. I know I've talked about this in previous episodes. It's from the book, uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And basically the pain body is like your emotional energy field that in it holds all the traumas, all the pain, all the hurt, all your past experiences. And it all is like being it's carried with you throughout your life unless you like work on it but your pain body affects your physical body they're basically like reflections of one another whatever's going on in your emotional state reflects in your body so yes. your body can be a good indication of what's going on <laughs> oh yes it can yes oh god yeah so lauren had a really interesting journey uh, in the past like six months with yeah. your pain body um reflecting on your physical body mm -hmm. and i wanted to talk to you about it today because i think it's really relatable i think yes. a lot of people oh <laughs> Hello. Sorry, Willow, I think a you. lot of people experience similar situations and I think yeah I think um your story should be heard thank you it's been a ride so tell me like where it all started how it all started so I did four hit classes in a row at a gym some background information about me I was a very competitive soccer player I played division one soccer in the states for two years in college and before that i played really high competitive soccer from six years old to i was 20. so 14 no how long is that i can't do math 14 years <laughs> don't 14 ask me. years i played <laughs> i played very competitive soccer and what came with that was just eventually you have to like kind of dissociate from your body because you're in pain, but like you want to play in a game. You and know you what I mean? you have to, like and you're kind of forced to, right? Yeah, you have to, especially with me. I was like the lead goalkeeper on a lot of my teams and my coach would get mad at me if I like couldn't play in a game. You weren't allowed to say, hey, I need a rest. Like, my body's telling me I need to chill out. Like, that was not an option. No, it wasn't. So basically, fuck listening to your body if you're playing sports uh, because that's not acceptable. Literally, that that's kind of the motto. I feel like nowadays, like, I th feel like a lot of people who played college soccer will tell you that after they quit, they've had to deal with a lot of mental health things and physical going health. and physical so like like I started doing these hit classes at the gym we go to and I started getting back into the soccer mentality of like oh I really like I feel really fit right now like although I'm sore the best way to fix soreness is to work out again that's basically what they teach you I realize now that you actually do need to take rest when you start feeling that soreness and if you like I 
feel like people should go and stretch after that happens. Um, that is the best way to recover when your muscles are really sore, not going and doing another HIIT class. So I did four HIIT classes in a week. Girl. <laughs> and also, you're, you used to be in the mindset of like, even though I'm tired, I can push and push harder. Yeah. Like in the class. Like you were not listening to the little cues that no. your body may have been telling you. The thing is, I couldn't hear them. I couldn't hear the cues. So I did these four workouts and I hurt my knee. And I was like, oh, why did I hurt my knee? Like, was it like we did squats with weights and like that hurt it? Like that's never, I've never gotten hurt by just doing squats with a 15 pound weight. So I was like, was it that? Like I did feel something kind of pop, but I thought that it was, this is where my soccer brain comes in. I was like, you know what? It was just my muscles, like just doing a little thing, but I'll be fine the next day. And remember, I spotted like a massive bruise on your knee and you were like, I didn't even know that was there. Well, that also was in the knee. I had ACL surgery for those who don't know. And that was the knee that I had ACL surgery. And when you go through a really big surgery like that, it fucks up all the nerves around your knee. So you can't really feel it. So one day Kira was like, babe, are you okay? And I was like, what, what, do, what do you mean? Like, I think I'm okay. Like, what's going on? And Kira's like, you have a really big bruise on your knee. And I go, what the fuck? Like, it was where did like, that happen? It was like green and purple and shit. Yeah. It was like a pride knee. Oh, like, <laughs> she was showing pride color. It's like, <laughs> but it's like, it was a little intense. I was like, how did you not feel that? I know. And so my knee was hurting and it didn't feel like a tear. It just felt like my bones were just not wanting to move. And so I went to the doctor. Everything was fine. And he was like, let's go do an MRI to see if there's any really short tears in there, like small ones that we can't see. And it, I had to wait like three or four months to get an MRI because that's how it is in Canada. And I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I don't want to wait that long. And that was actually a sign from the universe that like, I don't need the MRI to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, okay, so maybe I'm deficient in something. I could get a blood test, but what if I just like start taking vitamin D, taking CBD, which is really good for joint pain and chronic pain. It was getting better for like a few hours and then it would go back. So my knee was hurting and then the other knee started doing the same thing. And then my shoulder started hurting and Kira and I were going to a yin and calm class, like where we go to the gym and I went to lay down and I started crying because my shoulder hurt so bad. It felt like I dislocated it. Like I didn't know what was going on. We went to the ER that night. because I was like, you know what? My body, like, I think just needs attention right now. And we need to go to the ER and see if I dislocated my shoulder because that's genuinely what it felt like. We were there for what? Maybe six hours. It was a Friday night in the middle of the night, which is the most popular time probably for a hospital in the middle of Toronto is a Friday night. We got home at like 4 a.m., I think. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. But nothing was wrong with my shoulder. Literally nothing. And they're like, let's give you some pills for the pain. I was like, I don't want your pills. <laughs> it's like, that's not the problem. No. Like, you can't just like cover shit up with pills. Like, obviously, it's a temporary fix. But Lauren knew that there was something underlying. You just had like an intuitive feeling that yeah. like this is there's more to it. How come? my pain is like moving throughout my body. It's exactly. not just like stationary in one spot. Now I'm having all these different bone pains in yeah. different parts of my body. So Lauren was like, okay, let's do a deep dive. And then literally a week later after we went to the ER, my other shoulder started hurting in the exact same way. And I was like, is literally a week later, like a Friday, is it started hurting again. I was like, what is going on? Like, this is so fucking weird. And so um, if you guys don't know Louise Hay, um, you need to hop on that train because I've definitely talked about her in this podcast. Okay, before. good. But you can like reiterate. So Louise Hay is this amazing spiritual healer. Rest in peace. But her energy is still with us today. And we have a book that she wrote in the 80s, mm -hmm. which kind of explains when something is hurting in your body, it has a deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with something that you're going through at this moment. For example, 
Yes. For example, a cold means you're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Both of us right now. Yes. <laughs> I looked up what knee was first and it said it has to do with the ego. And I was like, what? My ego is fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like ego can mean a lot of different things. Like ego is basically just like the false self. It's like the part of you that's been conditioned by the society. And then I looked up joints and it was like something about not feeling safe. And I was like, what? I was so confused when I first read that. I, I like refused to believe that. To do a little timeline. So when I, my knee first initially started hurting, that was in October. And then now we're in December and all my joints are hurting. And I've real I've read this thing from Louise Hay, and I'm like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden it was Christmas time, and we were supposed to visit my family, and I was so anxious about it because at this point my intuition was kind of telling me like you need to heal from past things with your family and things that you've gone through. <laughs> For me, it was like, I didn't know these things existed. And like, even when I met you, I'm like, my family's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> fast forward four years later, and I'm like, girl, I've been through some shit. You were and feeling really helpless at this point. You were like, you know what? I'll just do anything. I was crying so much, like the most that I've ever cried, like every night crying. I was like, why? So there were days to put into perspective. There were days where I couldn't I could barely get out of bed when I was going into bed Kira had to help me move my legs to get onto the bed like it was so bad like and I was crying while they were helping me move my legs onto the bed I'm so grateful for you of course, honey. <sighs> oh and, oh just cracked your finger and you couldn't sleep like you let every night you were up tossing turning waking up that is the worst sleep that I've ever had in my whole life I didn't sleep for probably four months straight because every would say, part of your body was fucking hurting. I was living on probably like two, three hours of sleep a night. So one night, um, Lauren was like, can you just, can you do Reiki on me? I have my Reiki level one. So I can just do it on like family and friends, whatever. For people who don't know what Reiki is, you can explain it better than me. Yeah, it's an ancient Japanese type of energy healing um, where you channel energy through the palms of your hands and you place your hands on people's body and set the intention that you are um, sending uh, universal energy through you into the person that you're healing. And you can also do it on yourself. I was doing this on Lauren's body. And as I was doing it, I was getting the download, like the realization that, oh my God, Lauren's body is shaking. I could like visualize their bones and they were like shaking and scared and trembling. And like, I just got the sense that like Lauren's body was scared before Lauren even understood that they were scared themselves. Oof. She was scared. All right. And after that, you were like, oh, let me like dig a little deeper. Like, am I scared? That, yeah, that moment really helped me because I was like, what do I need to be scared about? And for past things that I won't mention. I lived with someone in my household that I was genuinely scared of like my whole life. And I would lock my door when I would go to bed when I was really young, scared that this person would come in the middle of the night to yell at me, do hurt something. you. Like, yeah. Yeah. I realized that my internal inner child was finally reaching out and felt comfortable enough to make my external body hurt so that she could finally feel heard so that you could listen to her exactly because that was the only way that i was going to listen to my inner child was for me to be in pain and even as a child you had so many injuries mm -hmm. and it was like your body's way of saying hey i'm not okay like i keep getting injured Please look into this more. Yes, exactly. And I didn't get a lot of attention when I was younger for certain reasons that I won't say. But going through this in the last six months was my body's way of saying, like, I need attention from you and only you. And you know what? She got that. She got that attention. I don't know if Kira's talked about it on their podcast. I don't care. 
I did some shrooms and I had a magnificent meditation and I saw me when I was younger in a situation where I didn't feel safe and this person that I was living with was just yelling at me and I was sitting at the kitchen table just trying to do my homework and I saw myself now staring at my younger self and I said come here let me give you a hug and my younger self came to me and I gave her a hug and we had this big white light around us and she finally hugged me back and it just felt so good and I just felt so safe and it was the first time in my life that I ever felt safe because you gave yourself that safety. Exactly. Your like self now reached out to your younger self and your younger self reached out back. Exactly. And you had that connection. Yeah. And that was a huge turning point. By this time, it was mid-January. So I had been going through all of this pain since October. And it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in my life. But after it was done, I went through this really dark phase. Like, I welcomed in my inner child, and girl, she was mad, angry at every single thing. And Louise Hay, my girl, one time she says a story. You can read this in her book. She explains that one time she had pain in her shoulder, and she realized, oh, that has to do with anger. And so she would just beat a pillow up, Next day, her shoulder would be perfectly fine, just like normal. And so I was like, whoa, that like really resonated with me because I'm like having shoulder pain still. I'm having knee pain. And I'm like, you know what? The shoulders felt the worst because you don't realize how much you use your shoulders until they're hurting so bad. And I just was beating the shit out of pillows. I would walk past our couch and if I felt one ounce of anger, I would just punch the shit out of the couch. It just, it felt so good. Because especially as like females growing up in this like fucked up patriarchal society, we're taught to repress our anger. Yeah. And when we're anger angry as children, especially as females, we're told to shut your mouth and don't yell back. Don't express how you're feeling, right? Yeah. And so like all those years, you were just you held in all that anger and it was stored in your pain body. Therefore, it was reflected in your physical body, creating pain in all your bones. Exactly. And so once I had that big meditation and I hugged my inner child and she finally hugged me back because I was trying to connect with her for so long. I started doing yoga again and things still weren't getting better. And I'm like, what's going on? And then finally I reconnected to her and I let her live. There were times I played old songs in the shower and I was just bawling and that's what she needed. She needed to cry and- And let out her anger by punching let pillows. It out. Yeah, and- Screaming. Kira has talked about this in a episode before, but I took the space from my family and I didn't talk to any of them for I want to say like two months at least. One family member would call me and act like nothing happened and that made me mad. Yeah, just giving myself that space helped so much because at this point I was like, I need to feel safe in my own body and I'm the only one that can do that. And I haven't, I haven't felt that pain what did I say the other day? In like two to three weeks? Yeah. Or more maybe. I don't know. Maybe a month? The past month? Yeah. And oh, I just feel so grateful just saying that out loud. I'm like so that's proud amazing. Of you. That's like you did some hard inner work, but you healed your own damn body. Damn right. So what would you say to someone out there who maybe has like chronic pain or like, you know, they're having a similar situation to you like what would you say to help them out the thing that really helped me was learning how to do breath work okay because when I started diving deeper into my traumas and what I've been through you get really anxious yeah. going back there you and feel you, unsafe you feel unsafe and the thing is like you need to re-experience them so that you can work yourself through it after your brain has like developed or you're an adult and like you're ready for it. Feel to heal. Yes. 
literally one time we were high and I said I wanted to get that tattooed on my knee. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great mantra. Like you have to feel shit. Do you have to yes. like really go into that darkness and that pain in order to like shine light on your darkness? Like mm -hmm. I always say in every fucking episode, but yes, sorry, continue. I was dissociated like my whole entire life, not even with soccer, but with emotions as well because my family doesn't really express emotions. So you were starting to experience emotions for the very first time, like really deep emotions. Just all of them all at once. Right. Like so, I felt certain emotions, but like I kind of took on the more masculine approach because where I grew up, the females that were masculine were queer and I knew that I was queer. So like I took on like you can't cry and like stuff like that. You know what I mean? And That's what we grew up. And athletes. Exactly. It's like, don't cry. You're not hurt. Keep going. Keep playing. Yeah. It's fine. You're fine. And so when I would feel emotions like sadness and crying and anger, I would be like, no, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Right. So you know? all of a sudden you started unlocking all of these emotions and it was really overwhelming for you because you hadn't experienced the depth of these emotions because you've always exactly. pushed them down. So your nervous system was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Can I handle this right now? Exactly. And so my number one thing now and probably for the rest of my life is calm your nervous system as much as you can and breath work is medicine breath work does that i noticed that the one that really helped me was breathe in for four exhale for seven when i was really deep in those thoughts there was an underlying intuitive feeling that i could feel when i did my breath work that was like this is worth it what you're feeling right now and the darkness that you're feeling it is so worth it. Keep your nervous system calm. Go through it. Journal about it. Meditate about it. Punch the pillows. Keep doing what you're doing. You are so close to the other side. What was the first step in healing your body pain? Accepting it. I love that. I love that because I think that people can push shit away because they're like, ah, I don't want to be feeling this right now. Maybe they'll use escapism in some way. And like, mm -hmm. you know, I get it. Like escapism, it's necessary sometimes. But like when you keep doing that, it just reinforces the pain and it 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 doesn't end. So you need to actually look at it and be like, you know what? Whatever is going on right now, it's OK. Just right. acceptance. I remember one time I was in a really dark place like I would wake up at 4 a.m. like every night just in pain and I would go out and punch the pillow <laughs> I don't know how I didn't wake up Kira <laughs> and our cat would be like what's going on <laughs> excuse me <laughs> and I did some oracle card readings for myself and I was like oh god please universal energy please just give me some sort of sign that I am on the right path. And I drew this card that said, pillar of light. You are on the right direction. You are such a bright light. Keep going. Then I realized when I drew that, I was like, I just need to accept what I'm going through. I just, I need to give myself the empathy that I deserve. And empathy comes from accepting. I also, something that really helped me was listening to my body and what I need in that moment. If I'm hurting, I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? Oh, I need to go outside for a walk. I'm going to go do that. Oh, I need to smoke some weed. Bet. I'm going to do that. How can you summarize like what you went through? Like what was like, what was the core? Because I feel like we, we touched on a lot of different things and a lot of different things you were working on. What is like the core of what was going on? It was such a transformative experience and during those experiences you learn a lot of life lessons um i would say the core of it is i am safe when i'm connected to universal energy and i am always connected to universal energy i love that 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 is the core of it so throughout this process you have gained a really strong connection to yourself mm-hmm but your spirit, your spiritual self who is connected to the energy of the universe. Because mm -hmm. before this happened, I I came from a Catholic religious background and I was like, 
still skeptical about spirituality and energy as like probably a lot of people who like grew up in a religious organization and that experience showed me like no this shit is real Mm -hmm. and another thing that I realized was external things that happened to me are actually reflections of my of my own energy of myself Mm -hmm. so for example I would hear angry yelling on the street I knew that those people were just angry with themselves And that was a reflection of me, which means that like I took on someone in my household's energy and I made it my own, which made me angry at myself. But that was not my energy. And now I barely hear people yelling. And when I do, I'm like, okay, am I being mad at myself? Mm, I'm being too critical of myself. Yeah, that's true. So let's feel safe. And then the person goes away. Our external world reflects our inner world. Yes, it does. That is a huge lesson that I learned. And so that also encouraged me to feel more safe because that means the more safe I feel inside of me, the more safe my external world is going to be. And it is. Safety comes from within. Mm -hmm. We must work on feeling safe and trusting ourselves if we want to feel safe in the external world. Yes. Period. Period. (laughs) Period. As children, I feel like we just take on people's energies when we're little because we don't know any better. Exactly. Um, We're very sensitive to energies when we're little, so we take that on. But in reality, when you grow older, you realize that energy never belonged to me. So you know what? I'm not going to let it belong to me anymore. You can let it go. I'm not that angry energy. It is so important to do inner child healing. Mm Mm-hmm. I believe when we're healing our traumas, that's what we're healing. We're healing our inner child. Yep. I mean, I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm always going through like different like little decades or few year spans of my life where I'm working on. And I feel like right now I'm working on like my preteen, like Mm -hmm. going through puberty. Totally. Phase. And it's like so much. It's so much. But thank you so much for telling this story. It's such a vulnerable story. And you are so fucking strong and like self-aware and inspiring to me at how you were able to make that commitment to healing yourself and healing your body, healing your emotional body and gaining that uh, relationship to the spirit, the source. And I'm so proud of you for doing that. That was such a transformational experience for you. And I'm sure in hindsight, you would never regret no anything that happened like you're so happy that it happened even though it was hard Mm -hmm. but it it was proven to be a important experience yeah like a benchmark yeah listen if you're if you're going through a lot of pain right now emotionally physically whatever it may be it's scary but try looking internally and seeing all the things that you've been through because if you've been through a lot of shit you're so fucking strong and, and we've all been through a lot of shit. Exactly. No one on this planet has escaped traumas. Every single person on this planet has experienced traumas, okay? I know we like to separate ourselves from like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Or like, what I experienced, mm, other people have it worse. No. <laughs> yeah. Try not to compare your situation to other people's experiences. Exactly. Because what you went through is so valid. It's okay to be like, I'm not fine. Yeah. It's fucking so powerful to say, I am not fine right now. Please reach out to people. You do not need to keep all of this stuff inside. Like Lauren reached out to me and the universe for help. I did. I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to to reach out and talk about it. Talk about what you're going through. And I really hope that by us talking about this, you feel like you are more comfortable to to talk about your own your own stuff that you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. It's it's normal to like go to the doctor and check it out and see what's going on. And if if you've been doing that and it's not working out, like I said, maybe check internally and just get curious and ask yourself, how are you feeling today? Mm-hmm. And genuinely answer it. Check in with yourself a little bit more if you're not already doing that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for having me on your podcast, baby. Thank you for blessing this podcast with <laughs> a lovely story and um, of, of transformation. Mm-hmm. Thank you for all your kind words.
experience. I appreciate you so much. Of course. You helped me so much during that situation, and you helped me not feel alone. We are here and for I'm each other. Always be grateful for that. I am so grateful Never for you. That. I'm so grateful for you. Like I'm going through shit right now. I'm crying every day. Lauren's like always there. I've been through it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this was such a great episode. Hope you got something from it. Um, please leave me a comment if the platform that you're listening on has that or give this podcast mm -hmm. a rating and i Ooh, can't yeah. wait to five stars five star rating Ooh, yeah yeah and i can't wait to see you next week yeah yeah bye bye everyone have a blessed day and stay safe stay safe